All right, ladies, we are live. Hey, 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 and welcome back to another Self-Care Saturday. Woo! Listen, I am your girl, Jen. I am the Empowerment Director for the Phenomenal Woman Empowerment Network chapter here in Tulsa. And we are back for another self-care Saturday where we are making sure that we are checking in with you ladies and y'all are getting your mind, your health, your spirit, everything right. We want to make sure that you all are in 2021 living your best and fabulous life. So as I said, I'm Jennifer. I'm the director for the um, Tulsa chapter and I have my amazing, amazing, amazing sisterhood, phenomhood with me here today that I would love for you guys to um, get to know and before we actually get to hear the speaker. So ladies, take it away. I am absolutely so thrilled to be here. I'm your girl. You know, all the titles that I always put after that, but I'm your girl, Sharice L. Irby, P. Win visionary founder, and uh, I am just, I'm excited for today for so many reasons. Um, so I'm going to pass any other introduction I would do so that this next phenom can introduce herself because this is part of why I'm so excited. Take it away. Hey, hey, hey. I am Natasha Holiday, and I am now the Managing Empowerment Director yeah. for Toronto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. I am so excited. Sharice, for those who know, Sharice and I met two years ago in Toronto, and it was just a divine connection, and we just can't let each other go. So this was written in the stars from God knows how long, and this is just the next part of it. So as of yesterday, I am the Managing Empowerment Director for the Toronto region, and I'm super, super, super stoked to be in this position and to be a part of this amazing network of amazing, phenomenal wonderful women. Um, aside from that, I, you know, I do other stuff. I'm a therapist, a speaker, a comedian. I do all kinds of stuff, but now I can add to my list of titles, Managing Empowerment Director P. Win Toronto. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am like so excited. It was like, it was so hard for me to sit on that yesterday. Uh, this has been like two years in the making, right, Natasha? And so, yeah. uh, I told her, I said, when I left Toronto in 2019, I just knew, you know, I knew that, that she was meant to be in my life personally, but also professionally. I left Toronto knowing we would have a chapter there and knowing that Natasha would be our empowerment managing director there and uh, a managing empowerment director. And it was just, and so, you know, you know what I always say, you all, I didn't put it on a t-shirt. I'm going to speak what I seek until I see what I said. And I was yeah, going to yeah. speak it until God said, let it be so. And, you know, that's what he said two years later. So I'm excited. Welcome, Natasha. We are Thank so excited you. for all the greatness to come um, from Toronto, Canada. There's just so many phenomenal women in the surrounding areas as well. And so we're just excited about that. Okay, we got that out there. Woo! Yes. I'm excited for you too, Natasha. Like I love Canada. It's been a while since I've been there, but I've always like felt just like this beautiful love when I'm there. And so when I come, now I know I got a sisterhood of phenoms yes, that I can come and hang out with. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, that's so awesome. And I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, who is also a phenomenal woman from Toronto, who is part of PWIN. She is, was she our first sign up for the Toronto? Yes. 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 Yay! So awesome. I love it. I, I love had it. the pleasure of knowing her, knowing her for many, many years. So I would love to introduce Marsha Watson O'Mara. I just got to pull up her bio because I closed it. Hold on a hot second. <laughs> Marsha Watson O'Mara built the foundation of the Divine Executive Concierge Inc. in 2002. That is one of her hats. Marsha wears about 1,700 hats, but she is a wife, mother, giver. Her years of success in the industry has always been paced on her passion to help others and to help others make their lives easier. She delivers with a pure heart, integrity, and love. And I know that I've seen it. Her inspiration to create Divine Executive came from overwhelming positive outreach with the vision to see others thrive and succeed. Trained as an accounting specialist, Marsha has 
unique 20 plus years experience as a personal concierge, event planning, virtual assistant, and gift basket creation. And I will add to that her latest title, Office Mom, which is just the most amazing thing ever because she keeps business people in shape, but she does it with love, which is why she is the office mom. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Miss Marsha Watson O'Mara. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to be on uh, here today. Um, it's an honor. It's a true honor. So, and I'm a little bit nervous, everyone. So I had to make notes because I will forget because my brain can sometimes be a sieve. So <laughs> let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about um, time management is self-care. Um, and so if I could share my screen, uh, let's see if I can share this. Uh, uh, uh share. Hopefully I don't share the wrong one. <laughs> so can you see my time management is self-care screen? Okay, perfect. All right. So what is time management? Time management refers to how you choose to spend your waking hours to maximize your productivity and accomplishing your goals. Many successful people have different approaches that get them to where they are today. But the one thing they have in common is that they know how to juggle high level projects and make sure they spend the bulk of their time on the tasks that are most conducive to their success. Whoop, there we go. All right, so today we're gonna touch on time management saving tips, tips to beat procrastination because let's face it, a lot of us are sometimes like, mm, I'll get to it tomorrow. <laughs> So we're going to have some tips on beating procrastination, learning to delegate effectively. Um, I know that for some of us that delegating is hard <laughs> to say, here, you do it because you know how you want it done. So we're going to have a little bit, we're going to, I'm going to show you some tips on beating procrastination. I mean, learning to delegate effectively and improving your time management skills. And we're going to add some self-care practices to that too, because again, if you manage your time, then you can have a lot of time for self-care. <clears throat> okay, so I already said that part. So what is time management? So next, we're going to talk about why should I spend extra time planning? So you may think that um, spending extra time um, is, I mean, okay, so hold on. So why should you spend extra time is to um, so that you're not rushing through your day. Like I'm rushing through this right now because I'm nervous, but I'm going to slow down. So if I'm speaking too fast, let me know. <laughs> so um, it's time to slow down and get your day going so that you're not rushing. So this is why you're taking extra time to do this. If you're feeling like the pressure of running out of time is a huge source of stress and you wish you could avoid as much as possible, and you could avoid it as much as possible. We will talk about um, how to help you define management and the important skill for mastering and gaining your personal success in time management. People who cannot manage their time properly produce low quality work and are often more stressed. And I can say this from experience that there are times when I did not manage my time effectively and I just flung stuff together and it wasn't great work. So people like that are constantly under pressure and they, and if you've ever thought about a person who ha always has piles of work in front of them and have multiple things to do and while they seem to be busy, they're not. <laughs> they're actually under a lot of pressure to get work done and again it just produces low quality work. Um, and We've all been there a couple of times where, you know, we're like, okay, we're just gonna rush to do this. But if you're doing this consistently, then this is a good time to think about skills that you can gain to manage your time effectively. Multitasking. I heard somebody talking about multitasking today. <laughs> okay, so um, there are a variety of things that always call for our attention. If you're a mom, you're a wife, you're an employee and an employer or uh, entrepreneur, you have so many things that's going on within 24 hours in the day. So with um, different apps and processes and principles avail available for um, different sources, you might think this is what time management is all about by putting your to-dos in a calendar or a planner, 
in order to keep track of all of them. However, it's more than that. Let me go over to slide seven, yeah. It's more than that. Time management is actually about the following things, prioritizing, discipline, designating a set time and delegating what you can. Managing your time increases your productivity, relieves stress, improves discipline, and improves your ability to make good decisions. So have you ever been stressed out and you're, um, I have to make this decision right now, da, 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 but you have so many things on your plate that you can't even make a um, discerned decision. You're just like, yes, sure, let's do this or no, let's not. But again, because of stress, you weren't able to make a good decision. So time management is very important for making good decisions. And then there's procrastination. And if, if this is a serious challenge in your life, um, this is what we'll have to, this is what we'll have to focus on in order to get you to manage your time. Sometimes um, our time management is due to procrastination where we're like, okay, so maybe I'll do it in five minutes or maybe I'll do it next week. And then next, next thing you know, next week is here and you haven't done the um, thing that's been on your to-do list. Um, so even when you know that waiting too long will create a lot of challenges, getting started can still seem impossible. Unfortunately, when procrastinating affects your job-related tasks, it can have a negative impact on your professional career as well. So how can you kick this annoying tendency to put things off and start getting them done um, right away? <laughs> schedule your, um, schedule when you're going to do it. Make an appointment in your calendar for the day and time you're going to work on the task. This is far more effective than just leaving everything up in the air until the right moment seems to present itself. Consider scheduling your um, just enough time to get started. A long, unpleasant task can be very, a very difficult task. Uh, think I'm going to work on this for 20 minutes. That's easy enough that you should be able to sit down and get busy. Interestingly, once you get started, you'll probably spend a lot more than 20 minutes. So getting started is the tough part. Um, and to make it easy to get started, is, um, it would be great if you could just break the task up into smaller parts. Large tasks can seem overwhelming. By dividing the task into manageable parts, it, it will be psychologically easier to tackle the project. It's easier to do 10 small things than one big thing. Mm -mm. Okay, so we're going to learn how to delegate effectively. Delegating it effectively is a surefire way to accomplish more and to help people feel like they're a vital part of any effort. So there are times where people want to be seen, they want to help you, they want to do the work, but sometimes they don't know how to ask you and um, having them help you makes them feel good as well. So identify responsibilities you can assign to others. Distinguish between these jobs you need to do yourself and those you can hand off to others. If you have children, kids can be responsible by pitching in with household chores, or if it's a new employee, they might get oriented faster by taking charge of meeting logistics. Appreciate the skills of those around you. Your colleagues may have the ability to complete certain jobs better and faster than you. Think in terms of what people excel in and what they like to do. And the last two are, I laugh at these sometimes, but remain flexible. Focus on results and give people room to approach a task in their own way. So I have five plus four here, and we all know that five plus four equals nine. So however they get to nine, it, uh, it gets to nine. So if it's one plus eight, two plus seven, five plus four, six plus three, it all adds up to nine. So be flexible in how you get the results. Um, so allow people to do it in their own way. And practice asking for help. <laughs> a lot of us have an issue with asking for help. I know I do. My husband often is like, why don't you go and if I'll be walking around the store looking for something, he's like, why don't you ask for help? And I'm like, nah, it's okay. I'll do it myself. Meanwhile, I could have saved five minutes of walking around the whole of Walmart <laughs> by just asking for help. So if you feel hesitant about asking for assistance, 
practice first with some easy exercises. You can ask, um, like you could ask a librarian for help. Okay, so I'm not too sure if the libraries are open just yet, but you know, take it slow. <laughs> um, and you can ask maybe your spouse or a child or a friend or whatever to help you with small things until you get comfortable with asking for help. Um, and last but not least, budget extra time. Delegating saves time in the long run, but the first trial efforts could take longer than usual. Develop a realistic schedule and build in some leeway if it's the first time your assistant is working independently on a project. Mm -mm. So start time management starts the night before. And so we want to develop a empowering morning routine. Developing a morning routine that will boost your productivity can help you to stay on top of your comments, sorry, your commitments for the day. Many people benefit from rising early and following a set routine every morning. While this won't benefit everyone, it might just be what you need to feel more control in your daily tasks. Oop, that last part shouldn't be there. But anyway, avoid making any drastic changes um, right away. Like if you're considering doing a new routine, anything that you're doing new, don't just do the big and grand, do it uh, slowly. So begin the process slowly, start by waking up uh, just about 50 minutes earlier than you normally would, allow yourself to get used to this over a few days and um, to a week before waking even earlier. So waking up a little bit earlier, allow yourself to sleep earlier. Staying up too late when you're trying to get up early will have negative consequences. Early rising will allow you to go to sleep more easily um, earlier in the evening so you can work on getting up earlier. Keep your alarm clock away from your bed. <laughs> if you keep your alarm clock close to your bed, you'll hit the snooze button and destroy your chances of improving your morning routine. Keep your alarm clock at a distance so that you must get out of your bed to deal with it and um, to resolve not to climb back into the covers. Now, sometimes you have it out somewhere else in your living room and then you turn it off and, sorry, you have it somewhere else in your room and you turn it off and then you climb back into bed. But if you have your alarm clock somewhere that's out of your bedroom, um, it, you avoid rationalizing going back to bed, making yourself leave the room creates a habit such as to use the restroom um, as soon as you get up so you don't uh, convince yourself to get back to sleep. By the time you've used the restroom, otherwise distracted yourself, you'll no longer be thinking about going back to bed so you can proceed with your daily routine. Now, uh, self-care <laughs> practices that we can implement from now especially when you've relieved some time, you have a little bit of work, more time on your hands. Um, between home and social respons responsibilities, you'll often um, spend time taking care of other people and neglecting your own self, in way, in, especially in a busy world like that we're in right now. So taking care of family, work, business, um, whatever it case may be, you tend to um, put yourself at the bottom of the totem pole. And a lot of experts tend to say that, you know, we don't take care of ourselves. So now we're gonna implement some self-care and self-care isn't selfish. It's something that we definitely need to implement for ourselves. Definitely block out time for um, self-care in your schedule. It's not enough to occasionally stop your busy lifestyle and take a walk or indulge in a hot bath. Self-care is an ongoing process. Just as you reserve time in your schedule for other appointments, set aside time to take care of yourself. Enjoy your favorite hobby, whether it's to experience new recipes in the kitchen or paint pictures uh, or whatever your favorite hobby may be. Hobbies and activities that you already enjoy are easy to select and put into practice. Learn the art of saying no. <laughs> if someone comes and asks you to do something, put, you can always easily say, I'm not the right fit. However, I may know someone else. Thank you for thinking of me this time around, but right now isn't good. Um, or I've done this so many times, maybe you can ask somebody else to do it. I can't help, but I'll share my resources. Saying no is a complete sentence and sometimes you don't have to justify why, but just know that it's something that you need to do to take care for your self-care. And journaling. Journaling is definitely 
um, another way to uh, for self care, you can and be consistent with it too. So journaling your thoughts, just sitting back, getting up in the morning, journaling before you get your day started is a, a good self-care routine. And take it, taking breaks. I say this often that, you know, going from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting is not healthy. You should schedule times in between each meeting so that you can decompose, um, drink some coffee, just you know, regain yourself before you go on to the next meeting. And so I have a to-do list. <laughs> I check, you know, make a list of the things that you wanna do, check it twice um, that you can um, use for your time management checklist. One, start your day early. Um, what does your morning routines consist of? Do you have a healthy breakfast? Do you get straight to work or do you dilly dally and waste time on unimportant tasks? Uh, use a calendar or daily planner or a daily planner and set and respect your deadlines. So if your deadline is um, Monday at 3 p.m., respect it. Make sure you get your work done by that time. I created a um, be the master of your day checklist uh, as well, and I asked um, Natasha if she can drop it um, in the link, in the Facebook link, or just email it out to people that can definitely help you with your um, time management. So <laughs> if you have any questions in regards, I think I went through this pretty quickly, but if you have any questions in regards to um, managing your day or self-care or delegating, let me know. What a great topic. So, um, so Marsha, do you want to uh, stop sharing your screen? Oh, and yes. let's, let's chat. Let's bring everybody in and let's get our chat on because this is such a great, great topic. So thank you, team. Because uh, who would have thought time management is part of self-care? Wow. Yeah. Uh, come on now, like clutch the pearls. <laughs> uh, Brianna, we see you joining us, Coach Bree. Woo, woo. Hey, girl. Hey, hey Bree. Uh, I came in clutching my pearls. I'm like, oh, so she's <laughs> talking to me today. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She was like, I can pin clutch the pearls. I think one of the things, Marsha, that I love. Listen, love y'all, this, I think this topic was, I think this topic was like directly for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, let me tell you, Marsha, I used to wear the crown of procrastination, but I had to learn to throw that sucker in the trash and then take the trash can and go set it on fire. <laughs> because I I was horrible with procrastination. And I would, I would, you know what was bad about it is I pridefully said it. I would be like, oh yeah, I'm the queen of procrastination. Work with a sister. Know that I'm gonna get the job done, but just work with my time. Mm -hmm. And we were like, first off, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna keep working with your lack of time and poor management and all that stuff. So let me tell you, this was such a great topic. Um, I did, you know, as always, we always take notes, but I would love to um, get that, be the master of your day, because, you know, even in the mix of, you know, as, as I've gone from, you know, being an employee of 28 years in the retail industry, being a manager and stepping into that entrepreneurship, I struggle, I still struggle at times. And, and, and being transparent in it, I'm so excited about that new role, but managing my time and delegating and doing all the necessary things um, to make sure that I'm successful, it is key and I, I'm learning it. But let me tell you, it is something that is needed. You know, when you were saying, you know, I think it was, um, I, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, um, he had, it, it was in a book and he was saying that when someone comes in and asks him about making a decision, he would tell them, let me schedule time to think. And when I heard that, I was like, that's pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. And when you mention that, you know, not making, you know, quick rash decisions, taking that time and scheduling that time to think is so important. Putting yeah. that time aside. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to say thank you. I didn't mean to hog it all up, but I just want to say thank you because, listen, if you see that there's like 500 views later on today it's because i've watched it 500 times <laughs> <laughs> i've gone back and watched this because now i have the so documentary mentioned. Mentioned. i have that, that document i just haven't figured out how to add it to the chat or that's why where i'm okay. drop it, why don't you drop it in the group natasha in the phenomenology oh, yeah. facebook group. i will drop it in phenomenology. why don't you just drop it in there and make it like a file beautiful pdf okay yes and do it because i think that'll be more accessible to people um because you're absolutely right jennifer i just you know second everything you said um beverly brown is joining us via facebook she said this topic was well needed uh ladanya says great marcia and very thorough um and she talked about um, having true boundaries. Uh, there's some great feedback on on Facebook. Uh, you know, Jennifer, uh, one of the things you said that's so funny is you were talking about how um, Warren Buffett talked about scheduling time to think. I learned that concept, believe it or not, with my boys as they were growing up. Uh, they would always come to me and want me to make decisions right on the fly. Can I go spend the night here? Can I join this? Can I do this? Can I do that? And early on, I'd be like, yes, yeah, everything was just, and I found out that, you know, my time was being exhausted. It was chaos, disorganized. So I got to a place where I would tell them they would come begging me to do stuff. And I would tell them the answer is no, unless you give me time to think. If you want an answer right now, the answer is no. Now, if you let me think about it, I might be able to work some things out. I may be able to see a way around it and we could maybe have a different answer. But if I got to answer you right now, eh, not happening. So I started adopting that because sometimes you do need time to just think about something and think it through. Um, so I don't let people force me into making a decision. If I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And if I need to take time, schedule time, you know, that's what's going to happen. Uh, a couple things that I wrote down, Marsha. So great point, Jennifer. Another couple things I wrote down, Marsha, is when you were talking about being flexible. Um, that is so huge. And I had to learn that as a manager and a director of an operations team. When I began my management career, um, you know, I'm one of those people like, I, I set it up, I want it done this way, you know, every single time. I'm good about setting up procedures, all of those things, and then I want it done this way. And I, I think I inherited it from my mother. Um, she was a perfectionist. And so I can very much be that way, but I made for a horrible leader because people grow by being able to experiment and do, do things the way that they may want to do it. And Marsha, you hit it when you said there's multiple ways to get to nine. Let people find their way to get to nine. And you may learn in the process that there's things you didn't even, there's paths you didn't even think about because you were so locked in on five plus four. You know, you were so <laughs> locked in on this one way that all these other avenues could bring all of these other glorious things that you hadn't even thought about because you were stubborn on your one way. And so I switched my management process and I, I started being okay. I was like, this is the way I do it. And here's the results I get when I do it this way. But now let's see what you're working with. Let's see what you can do. And let me support you doing it the way you want to do it. And I changed my whole management style. You know, my VPs would always say, how, do, how are your teams so productive? How do you all get, because I let people be people and I let things, I let them do things their way. I introduced the flexibility in. And so now my boys are like, you're so laid back and relaxed. 
Because I don't have to be tense about everything. It's not Sharice's world and y'all just in it. We're all in this world together and we've all been created uniquely. God's given us all unique gifts and perspectives. And when you start chaining people to make them do things a certain way or to see things a certain way, um, that's bondage. And how can people grow when they're in bondage? Uh, so uh, I just love that you talked about the flexibility and asking for help. Say that loud for the folks in the back. We have got to highlight it. I put it in highlights when I Martha, took that note. Thank you for that reminder. Ask for help. And can I add on, ask the right people for help. Ask the right people. And Marsha, you may want to elaborate on this, but one of my downfalls years ago is I would I would ask for help, but I would ask the people that it was easy for me to ask. And they weren't even the right people to do the job. They weren't the right people to help me. So I didn't create it more turmoil. I didn't create it more work for myself because I took the easy route of asking who was easy and who I was comfortable with, but they weren't the right people. Marsha, just elaborate on that just a little bit more. Okay, so you have to know your circle, basically. Know who um, is equipped for whatever. So if, um, so I know Natasha can sing. And um, I can't sing. So I'm not going to put myself on a choir because, oh, I'm able and willing to do it. Just go to the person who they might need a little bit more help or a little bit more coaching and, um, you know, pushing along. <laughs> Ask that person who you know is equipped to do it, who is gifted to do it. And again, the five plus four as um, concept comes in here too, because, you know, it might, takes a little, it might take a little bit more time for them to get it done, but give it to the person that has that's capable of doing it instead of the person that's always willing, eager, and so the person that's willing, eager to and ready to do it might just be a people pleaser and not have the ability to do what they just want to do because they want to please you. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Mic drop. Right? I already put that in the chat because it was like <laughs> <laughs> that I, I have to agree. I like I wrote it down and then highlighted practice asking for help because I'm notorious for not asking for help. And then the pile of things goes longer that needs to be done because I'm not asking for help. I can't do it. And then I'm getting upset. So Marsha, thank you so much for that reminder. I took all kinds of notes. I like these ladies were so blessed. I was so blessed by this information, love the tips on procrastination, love the breaking it into smaller parts. And I especially love that because I'm a therapist and I tell my clients all the time, you want to reduce feeling overwhelmed. You're trying to climb a mountain when you only have to focus on the next four steps. So I love the idea of breaking it into smaller, more manageable tasks and consider the amount of time you have. This is, I feel like, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like as I get older, my concept of time is shifting. So what used to take me an hour doesn't take me an hour anymore. And I don't like feeling rushed. For me, that's a very uncomfortable feeling. So people ask me, why do you get up so early in the morning? Because I like to build in dawdle time because I want to be relaxed when I get somewhere. So I might get up with the, and wake up the crow to wake everybody else up if it means I'm not stressed, right? So I totally appreciate that consider time because that's something I always have to reevaluate. Something that used to take me a certain amount of time that might change over time. So I need to adjust how I do things. That was super, super helpful. I love that you addressed procrastination because some of us have reveled in procrastinating because when we think we succeed, when we procrastinate, it reinforces a muscle that we don't need stronger. So we need to unlearn this concept of, oh, I can do it even when I procrastinate because one day something's going to happen. And when we think we have five more minutes, that five more minutes is going to go and then we'll have no time whatsoever. And we had really days or weeks to work on something. So I'm so grateful again for that reminder that procrastination is not the route to go. And I love that you said plan so that you don't have to rush. Like I was just like all kind of snaps over here when I heard that because like this is, it's it sounds so simplistic, but it's so key, especially because most of us, I don't know one person who's only doing one thing in their life. We're, we've got a side hustle, we're entrepreneurs, we're wives, parents, mothers, this, that, and you, you name it. And it's like, 
with all these hats that we have to wear, we have to plan, we have to schedule some stuff. We can't just take it all on the fly. So really, really great tips. Love that you added budget extra time because that's an insurance policy. That's giving us a little leeway when things go, go, don't go exactly as planned. Um, some really great tips. And the last thing that really stood out to me because I've known I've not done this always is take breaks. So that's um, my homework when I leave here today is make sure I schedule more breaks in my life because sometimes I'll go, 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 go without any breaks. So Marcia, thank you again. Such amazing information, so needed. So many things we probably knew, but we needed reminders of. Like, can I get a witness? Is anybody else like, I may have known that, but I wasn't doing it. So thank you for the reminder. And as somebody who knows her personally, if you ever work with her, she will make sure you do what you need to do. She will keep you in shape that she will whip you into shape and keep you there. So even as her friend, sometimes I catch myself, if I know she heard I have a task, I just send her messages because I'm like, before she comes to me to say, did you do it? I'm a messenger. I did this. I did this. I did this. I did this. Because <laughs> office mom will be on it. <laughs> so wonderful. So great. Thank you so, so much. So I wanted to share a um, comment. like. Marcia, let me tell you, this topic is like it's touching home for so many because, you know, we, we have so much going on in our lives. And, you know, I said it the last time that when we think about self-care, we often think about the bubble baths and the staycations and the relaxations. And our minds don't go to, you know, self-care is time management, taking time to think you know, giving yourself grace and scheduling breaks. And so that's really, really good. Um, we have a lot of great comments that are coming through um, on the post right now. And I wanna say, uh, Sh Sherry, uh, maybe Shari Freeman, um, she says, what is it? Shay. Shay, okay, I'm so sorry, Shay. I didn't mean to pronounce your name wrong. Um, I'm very bad about asking for help. This was a much needed word. I have a I'll figure it out uh, mentality and it just tends to make me work harder and not smarter. So thank you, Shay, for sharing that because I think a lot of times, you know, we, we don't ask for that help. And when we are transparent about really what we have going on, we help so many other women. You know, that asking for help, you know how it went back in the day when the teacher says there's no stupid question? You know, and you tend to sit back in the class and you don't ask that question because you think, oh, they're going to think that I'm crazy or I'm stupid. But that's the same in this day and age. If we don't ask for help, we don't know how many other people out there that's, that has that same question. So, Marsha, thank you so much for this topic. And, and I'll say it again. You go back and watch it later on the night and you see there's been 500 views. It's going to be because of me. <laughs> or me. And other Just so everybody knows, I have posted the Be the Master of Your Day PDF. It is now in the Phenomenal Woman yeah. Network. It is posted in the group. It is on there. Download that PDF. You got it. We couldn't take enough notes. So I'm glad that there's something. There's a takeaway. Thank you again, Marsha, for that. Yes. I love it. And if you're viewing and you're not part of our Facebook group, go over to Phenomenology. That is our Facebook group. And just ask, and we'll make sure that you um, that you gain access. And that thank you, Natasha, for posting that PDF. Um, also, Beverly Brown in the comments said, "Making the list is easy. Following it is the hardest part. Prioritizing is absolutely key." And that's so true. Making the list is like the easy part, <laughs> um, but following the list. And then, um, you know, prioritizing what's on there. And, um, and Beverly also said, yes, people grow through allowing them to do it their way. Then creativity begins and it grows and flows. Um, LaDonia says, motivated self-care values. These are life lessons. Um, so... <laughs> My brother is clowning. Carlos. Oh, this is time. Carlos is adding some comedy to the chat. Yeah, we need to eliminate men. This is why. No, I'm kidding. We don't eliminate any men. We love y'all. Uh, I'm not going to even give you no shine, Carlos. 
here. <laughs> we see you acting up on air. You are just hilarious. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> I was reading that. I was like, oh, okay. Ways, Carlos. <laughs> that works both ways, you know. That's a two way street, dude. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, as um, Cherise and um, Natasha was saying, you know, this is such a, this is such a great topic. And I'm so glad that we got the opportunity to um, hear what you had to share. Um, Marsha, um, how can one follow you? I know that you have a business. How can one follow you and get in touch with you if they would like to reach out to you later for some coaching or some counseling or, or consulting? Uh, so my web address is uh, divineexecutive.ca. That's D-I-V-I-N-E executive.ca. And my Instagram handle is at divineexecutive.ca. Or my office mom handle on Instagram is office mom for you on Instagram. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Marsha, do you mind so popping that in the chat? I was trying to type it and I was like, in case I get anything wrong, if you want to throw that right there in the chat. Yes. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. Bree, you were quiet. What you got for us? What? what okay, I was trying to be quiet, but what? <laughs> but the wheels were turning. I could see the wheels turning. Well, so I want to go back and watch, but one of the things that like just stuck out to me is like set and respect your deadline. And I was just like, oh, so you got to respect it. You just don't, you just don't set it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I made sure to write that one down. Circled it a little bit. I, I've been full-time like four weeks now as a full-time yeah. entrepreneur and it is like exciting <laughs> but I'm still like learn like time management is different we have a lot of time that you're not used to having so um <laughs> so it's been fun so I'm so I'm listening and I'm like oh gosh I have to go back and watch because this was for me today for sure <laughs> Follow her on Instagram. I read every post like I'm reading the word. Okay, I should. Yeah, tell <laughs> Such me great twice. tips on her Instagram. <laughs> tell me one time, I'll do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I'm so grateful for this topic today. Um, Miss uh, Cherise, is there anything that you would like to share? I know if you did not catch us in the beginning of the... Um, episode. We have some great news, y'all. Listen, oh my gosh. So Sharice, I want you to go ahead and share that excitement and that news again. And then I, Natasha, I want you to chime in. <laughs> I'm like doing cartwheels, y'all. And I never even learned how to do cartwheels as a child. Okay. But I was show doing them on yesterday because we have a new Managing Empowerment Director for our Toronto, Canada chapter, and none other than the fabulous, phenomenal, fierce, vibrant, amazing Natasha Holiday. Yes, thank I've been praying you, for you, this. Thank you. you. I've been praying for two years. So see, when you pray for a thing and when you speak it, it don't always happen overnight. But rest assured that God will bring it to pass if that is what he said. And he said it to me two yes. years ago. And I, I started, look, speaking what I see until I, speaking what I seek until I saw what I spoke. And um, and so it has come to pass. And I'm just, I'm, I'm gleeful over that because Natasha really is, dynamic and she's a wonderful person you know so you got to really get to know her I encourage you all um schedule time <laughs> to be able to uh chat with her get to know her um she is a mental health therapist she is a just a really great great person and then on top of that she's gifted so she's funny she's talented she's all of these other things more than anything else she is a woman of God um I love her her spiritual commitment um and so I can just go like on and on because she's absolutely amazing and so I, I believe what she will add 
to Pwin, although she's already been adding it. You know, I, I held, look, she she instigated us going to dinner and I ain't never let go of her coattail since then, okay? She was like, when am I going to get rid of this girl, okay? Uh, no, I'm not going. trying to get rid of you. You're <laughs> stuck with me now. <laughs> I wasn't going nowhere. Um, and so I think she brings, I know that she brings so much to P-Win and P-Win can't wait to pour into her as well. And so welcome, Natasha. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so funny because a while back when you said, you know, you're, you started the open houses and you were saying what you're doing in Toronto and I kept hearing my spirit get involved and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I was procrastinating, which uh, thankfully I, I had ended that before today's meeting or else I would have felt even more convicted, <laughs> but I really was putting it off. But as I'm, cause, and Brie, I'm, I'm right behind you, girl. I'm transitioning into full-time entrepreneurship. I'm actually being catapulted into it, given some certain circumstances, but it is, I started going with the difference in what I can do with my time. Where do I want to put my time? And I said, well, P wins one of those places without a doubt. There was not a hint of a thought of this is not where I want to be. I was like, absolutely got to get on board. D Toronto needs this. So um, and Marsha was our very first person to sign up as a PWIN partner for the Toronto chapter. So we are starting to build our partnership here in Toronto. I can't wait till we can, it might be a minute, but do an in-person event. I want us to have a paint and sip and some of the other stuff I see going on in some of the other chapters, but I'm just so happy to be a part of this network of phenomenal, amazing women. And I just can't wait to see where we go from here. Yes. Listen, I love, I absolutely love what God is doing um, for, you know, the women of PWN, um, the friends of PWN. I feel like he has us in this place where he's like, he's putting us on these slingshots because you said you got catapulted into it, but God is putting us on these slingshots and he's like, here you go. Let me just shoot you on into your next girl and not even wasting time. Like, I feel so like um, it's such a joy to be with a group of women who not only support you, even when you're not listening, even when you're not on live, they're supporting you in prayer. They're supporting you just any way that they know how. And you feel that energy. And that's one of the things that I feel from Natasha. Um, we've never met personally. But I remember when, when Sharice told us about, um, when she told me that she was gonna have dinner with someone in Canada. And I was like, oh, I love Canada. And then here we are today, this beautiful, beautiful soul that is now the director for the, the Toronto chapter. Listen, it is just amazing. And then our first partner, Miss Marsha, she just brought a powerful, powerful um, self-care episode for us. And it's just, it's just all flowing and going. And I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. And, and, and I say it all the time, you're gonna hear me say it and repeat it. If I can get enough letters to put on a t-shirt, I absolutely love PWIN. I love what it's about. I love the fact that we are meeting women right where they're at in life. It, 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 it's, it speaks volumes because for that woman that is hurting, for that woman that is questioning, should I step into this entrepreneurship? For that woman is saying, I need a community. We are right here and we're meeting you right where you're at. So don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like you got to have this, this, and that in line. We have a community of women that even if you're saying, I'm the queen of procrastination, Marsha's going to check you and get you right in your spirit and say, hey, girl, listen, no, you're not. I got some tips for you. So it's, it's that that I love and what we are doing um, for, um, for, for PWAN. And if you are just joining us, or if you have never heard about PWAN, we encourage you to, one, go to the website and see all the amazing things that we have going on. But we have, listen, we have a lot of things that you can participate in um, and just becoming a part of the Phenom Hood. Uh, one of the main things, and I'll, I'll have Sharice to touch on it just a little bit because 
Uh, this is her baby. We have what's called In Lead Academy. I think she's getting ready to say something. No, okay. let me just jump in really quick because yes. y'all, I'm also getting ready for the Las Vegas luncheon and I got to run down and go get the caterers. I know, <laughs> I got to run down and get the caterers because they're not letting them up. Um, but one of the things is I'm going to talk about in lead and a couple other things and then uh, I'm going to have to pop out. But um, Marsha, Beverly is asking, can you give some hints on prioritizing and time management on social media? So I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and then I got to pop out, you guys, and go get the um, the caters, and you guys continue. Uh, Jennifer, I'm going to turn some controls over to you, so you should be able to end everything. Um, but okay. also, I don't know if we announced it formally, but I can't leave this space without also just announcing and if we said it, I'm going to say it again because I absolutely love her. Um, but co um, Coach Bree is also an ambassador for Tulsa. So she agreed to come on as a Tulsa ambassador. And that yeah, was yeah. like uh, three or four weeks ago when she made that decision and like brought me to tears. Uh, and so she's going to be stepping into that role as well, providing some much needed assistance to Jennifer and to P-Win overall. And so, you know, that's another one that, you know, I just kept speaking because I was like, I ain't turning her loose either. So uh, I just another person that I just absolutely fell in love with when I met her when I first came to Tulsa. So I just had to make sure I threw that shout out there. Yes, we have the Next Level Empowerment and Development Academy. We are helping women make their dreams come true by becoming certified life coaches. You can also take entrepreneurship classes. We have an entrepreneurship program with over 50 robust courses to help you take your entrepreneurship to the next level. I mean, everything from business and financial documents to in mobile to um, uh, security for your website, cybersecurity, uh, all of those components, we have it all rolled in to an entrepreneurship program. Uh, we have a leadership mastery program. And close to Jennifer's heart is we have our customer service program as well. Um, Jennifer is like a stickler for customer service. So we had to make sure that we got that in there as well. And you can um, take your customer service skills to the next level. C customer service is the backbone of your business. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to take care of customer service. So uh, we have that as well. So it's absolutely amazing. You can go to our website. You can learn more about our Next Level Empowerment and Development Academy and what's going to be best for you um, each month we are able to scholarship women in um, thanks to our P1 partners and grants and donations. We're able to subsidize a majority of the cost for those women that were able to assist and help through the program, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and so I just, I love the in lead program. I'm so glad P1 is able to do it. Uh, if you're needing to take any of your skill sets to the next level, y'all check it out. I'm telling you, and it's no joke. I think people go into it thinking, oh, this is going to be easy breezy. And then they get into it and they like, oh, wait a minute. I got to focus. I got to pay attention. I'm going to learn something right here. I'm not going to just get on here and run through these courses. Okay. Okay. Um, so definitely yes. it's going to be able to take you to the next level. So make sure you check it out. Uh, as I said, we have our P Win Las Vegas luncheon getting ready to take place here in just an hour. Um, so we're amazed. I'm just blessed to be able to be among such amazing women. P Win is a collective power of women across the globe seeking to empower, encourage, equip, and elevate 1 billion women. And I know that's hefty. People think I'm crazy. 1 billion. It's only crazy <laughs> until it happens. It's only crazy until it happens. So don't play with us. Uh, that is what we're set out and what we're going to be doing. So let me go get these caterers and I'm going to turn this back over to y'all. I love you Marcia all. Thank you for joining us. Marsha, you did such a fabulous job. Um, this you. was so educational. Blessings, blessings. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, awesome. So to answer Beverly's question, um, say it with me. I am a good steward of my time. 
<laughs> say it over and steward. over again. I am a good yeah. steward of my time and focus. Um, honor the goals that you um, have every intention of crushing. Use a timer um, when you're on social media. Because um, let's face it, we want to have some time to scroll or do whatever it is on social media. And this is how you get to meet new people. But set a timer that this is the time that I'm going to spend on social media. And when you're in work mode, turn off your notifications. You don't want to be distracted by the notifications like, oh, look, I'm just going to look at this one thing. And the next thing you know, you're down this rabbit hole of TikTok and stories and whatever the case may be. Turn off the notifications so that you're not distracted by it. Remove every distraction so that you can focus the time that you set aside for um, your day. And if you're a business owner and you feel like you get caught up in social media, sometimes hire a social media manager if you can so that they can um, handle your social media for you while you're doing your work. And there you go. <laughs> Great tips. Awesome. So awesome. And listen, for the Las Vegas women, if y'all are watching, welcome. We're so excited that you all are now a part of the family. Listen, I say sisterhood, phenomhood, family, y'all all a part of it. So we're so excited that you guys are doing that. Um, you're having your luncheon today. Um, and we look forward to um, officially meeting you. It may be via Zoom, but we look forward to meeting you and just celebrating with you and just loving on you um, as a part of the sisterhood and be not hood. Um, also, shout out to my girl, Brianna. She, as Cherise said earlier, she's one of our ambassadors. Listen, Brianna, she is so amazing. She's here in Tulsa with me. And this young lady, she just, she's making powerful moves and she's doing it silently. And I love that about her, but she's doing it silently and impacting and, in, uh, you know, really helping a lot of people around the Tulsa area. So I'm super excited that she has made the decision to be an ambassador for PWIN because I know all the gifts and talents that she has is just going to add on to the greatness that this organization um, shares and gives to the women around the world. Um, I want to say thank you, Miss Brianna, um, for everything that you're doing and all that we're going to be doing in the future. I'm super excited about us working together. I want to say congratulations to you, Miss Natasha for taking on this fabulous, awesome role. Girl, listen, you're going to have to get a whole different kind of spotlight for this, this role hard. that you're about to be in because <laughs> God is going to show favor on you because you've made the decision to step into it because this is a blessed organization. Miss Marsha, thank you for being the first, the first phenom to say yes and be a part of the movement for what we're doing. By December the 31st, we want to be able to bring in more than 100 women. We are touching women all over the world. And listen, it's not about having the numbers in, you know, of, oh, we want to have 500 women by this day. It's about building a sisterhood and a network of women that is able to come together and help each other and build and make this place a better place. And, and being able to network. Now, I, I have someone right now that I can reach out to. If I have a young lady that's here in the Tulsa area that says, I'm struggling with time management, Marsha, let me give her a call. If I have someone that's struggling and needing some counseling or some therapy, Natasha, let me give her a call. I can pass it on. If I know someone that needs to, that's thinking about building wealth for their family, no matter what age they're in, Brianna, I can give her a call. And it's that type of network that we are wanting to bring together for you ladies to be able to say, hey, I have someone that I can call on. I am not alone. So that is what PWIN is all about. I want to say thank you, ladies, so much for joining us um, today, spending this time with us. Before I officially close out, I want to ask you ladies, is there anything else that you have to say that you'd like to leave us with? We love you, Jennifer. 
We huh. see you, girl. You're so bomb. You celebrate everybody uh-huh. else. But I'm like, can we talk about what you do? Can we talk about how great you are? <laughs> oh, thank you. So thank we you. are so thankful and grateful for you because we wouldn't even be here on Saturdays if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Aww. We see you. We appreciate you. We love you. All the things. So I had to throw that in there. Now you can close. <laughs> I totally I agree. That. Thank you for acknowledging that, Bree. I, I just got to go now because I got to redo my schedule. I, I feel very convicted to like, Listen, look at how yes. I schedule my Natasha's time. Natasha's multitasking too. <laughs> yes. So thank you, ladies. Thank you for the the words of encouragement and the beautiful words and just acknowledging me. I appreciate it. Um, I don't do it for the spotlight. I do because this is the heart that God has given me. And this is the platform to be able to do it with. And I'm so grateful to have a team of women that is saying, hey, sis, we want to do it with you. So thank you, ladies. Thank you to everyone that is watching. Um, If you ladies have questions after the um, broadcast, please reach out to us um, via Messenger. Um, or in the P1, um, on the P1 website, we will be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Marsha, for the great message that you took for today. We're super excited about what you're doing, and we pray blessings and favor over your business. You all have an awesome day. We'll see you on September the 18th for our next Self-Care Saturday. Also, stay tuned because it's going to be an interactive so stay tuned for all the posts that was that will come after that, but be ready to engage with the next self-care Saturday. Y'all have an awesome day. Happy Saturday.